Hi folks, today I'm going to teach you how to deal with scans from the structure scanner from the iPad. Specifically, this is of a transtibial amputee. Um, sort of the game plan for today is we're going to isolate this residual limb uh, and then smooth it out such that a prosthetic socket can be custom fitted to its geometry. So let's begin. The first thing we want to do is separate it from the rest of the scan. The easiest way to do that is with the plane cut tool. So something nice about the plane cut tool is if you select um, is it allows you to sort of draw lines that can bisect whatever scan that you're dealing with. So that's the quickest way as opposed to trying to align them with these um, coordinate system tools. So that's what I'm going to do here. You'll notice that um, I'm still getting sort of the knee on the other leg. Don't worry about that. We can eliminate that quite easily. So we're going to say accept. Um, the quickest way to take care of that issue is to basically select all the things that you like and then invert that selection. So the way we do that is we just click on the part, we hit E to expand, um, then we do I to invert the selection. So you'll notice here there's sort of this random bit of mesh floating on the inside of the scan that's not connected to anything. And this guy can be completely isolated once we invert the selection, right? And it also selects this other part. So if we invert it again, you see that I'm only selecting mostly the regions that I want. You know, there's some regions that I don't want, but they just happen to be there. That's fine. So let's invert again and then use X to delete it. Great. So I noticed there was some section on the inside. Let's see if I can invert. I guess it's integral. Okay. So now what we want to look for is ways of deleting these unwanted parts on the inside. So we're going to use our selection tool. We're going to click on the inside. We're going to expand the selection by holding control and then uh, zooming out or rather you know, toggling the mouse wheel. Uh, I can't. Yeah, so it would be zooming up with the mouse wheel. Then we hit escape once we have the selection that we want. It looks like if I were to. Yeah, I can delete this guy with the same operation that I did before, right? Where we expand the, to selecting the things that we like. And then we delete all the, the guys that we don't. So let's get right on in there. This is a really good um, showcase of the center tool. Right? It's very hard to navigate the inside of a mesh, but if you can sort of center what you're looking at, it becomes a little bit easier. Okay, so I selected too much. Mm -hmm, that looks fine. Great. So that's one of the great things about Mesh Mixer, is that you can select individual triangles that make up the mesh. And this actually, this operation is easier to do when you have a low density mesh because there's just less triangles. Something to keep in mind. Okay, so there's some nastiness on the inside here. There you go. So I can sort of orient around it, expand my selection. And basically what you want to do when you're doing this is make sure you're not getting the outside, right? So because all these parts are, all, the whole mesh is integral, even though I've selected the inside, if I expand my selection too much, I'm actually going to delete the outside. So I just want to expand it just enough that I'm deleting inside parts, but not outside parts. Okay, so this is quite manual, but it doesn't usually take very long, so it's pretty good. Okay, so this one part looks like it's trying to give us some trouble. A good way to sort of account for that is just delete this part. If you delete the parts that sort of connect the trouble areas to the rest of the mesh, then you don't actually need to delete the rest of the mesh. You just need to do the sort of expand to things that I like, right? So let me give you a demonstration of that. Okay, so now we see that there's two disgusting parts, sort of parts that we don't want floating in the mesh. So if I click the part that I want, I expand to the whole thing, and then I invert it. Now I've selected only the parts that I don't want, and then we use X, it'll only delete those parts. So that's a pretty useful tool. Now what I'm double do, uh, what I'm gonna try to do is fill these in with the F tool. That's great. So it looks nice. And then over here, I'm actually just gonna take off a little bit from the top with a plain cut. So plain cut, because sometimes that's easier than, oop, than trying to do, trying to mess with the selection too much. If you can just remove the part that's giving you trouble. Here, let's let's try the plain cut again. Okay. Just right over here. Great. Okay. So if I come in around here and I sort of 
double click the exterior and I zoom in a little bit looks like all these parts are connected no problem every case is a little different right as it is with most things okay not really there we go just cleaning up this hole in general when you want to fill a hole it's nicer if it's cleaner right it just gives you less trouble so if you can sort of individually select these points this is a pretty bad practice in general um, try to do things more on a glo global scale but there's only a few of them it sort of makes sense to fix it okay so let's expand to delete this one. All right, so now I think the inspector tool should probably take care of the rest of this for us. Let's use I, Q. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So now we have this sort of low resolution mesh. Sort of our plane cut isn't as pretty as we'd like it. So let's sort of, and our axes aren't as great as well. So we're going to start to clean all of those things up at once. So um, this should be the top, right? It clearly isn't. So let's align that. Let's go back to top. All right, we're getting there. Let's do right, great. So that looks dandy. Let's do it in the world frame. That's the right side. It actually should be. So I like to, sorry, I like to align the planes um, uh, so that whenever I'm orienting something and I say, like, let's say I click the front, I'm actually looking at the front of my part. Uh, so it's just easier when I'm using the part, um, when someone else is sort of looking at it. Um, this is not actually necessary at all, but it's sort of a common thing that I like to do for myself and for other people that I work with, because I find that it makes life a little bit easier. Okay, great. If we do that, and again, I did that with a transform tool. Okay, so as I said earlier, our mesh was sort of gross. Sorry, not gross, but our plane cut wasn't ideal so we're sort of going to bring it up over here we see that that's a lot cleaner we think oh, not quite okay so let's do a little bit more aligning rotate this friend over here accept great okay so it doesn't have to be perfect but you know close to perfect is ideal okay so let's flip that selection boom okay so now we have this nice residual limb. Um, but we can smooth it. So let's do that. So we're going to control A to select all of it and then control F to smooth. We want to do shape preserving. Ah, no, just kidding. First thing we want to do is we want to remesh it. So we want to increase the density of the mesh. So let's sort of demonstrate that here. All right, let me go back actually so you can see the whole process. So this is the density of the mesh. It's pretty low density. Now we're going to do R for remesh. So as you see, it's increasing the density. There's a couple options we can select. I'm just going to keep adaptive density for this purpose. It's great. And so we're just trying to add more triangles. So that looks great for me. Um, as you can see that the shape is actually, or the, the, the geometry of the mesh is pretty much identical to before. The plane cut was affected. So that's, you know, that's fine. Um, so let me just, just notice that, that that is what happens when you remesh. Oh, actually, sorry. That's actually an option. You can you can keep sharp lines when you remesh. So if I preserve sharp edges, then that doesn't happen. Okay, great. Um, so now that I've remeshed and it looks a little bit more dense, I'm gonna do a smoothing operation. So the smoothing operations usually work better when you have a larger mesh density. So I'm gonna see smoothing scale a little bit higher. Oh, no, let's keep it low, just kidding. Smoothing scale one, great. Okay, so now when I look at the mesh, it looks a lot of, a lot cleaner than it did before, right? Some of the, you know, we have more polygons, and I haven't really changed the geometry too much from it, it being true to form from the scan. And that is how you take a scan of a residual limb, and then you can turn it into sort of just the residual limb so you can model based off of it. I hope you enjoy.